What does it mean to be a leader in what you do? There are leaders in multiple elements of my job, right? There is the leader of the teams. Right? It's my job to help them figure out what's, what to work on. But my job isn't really to be a, a thought leader in um, in advanced statistics, right, or, or operations research. It's not my gig. Um, my gig is is more to uh, uh, help them solve prioritization problems, uh, to solve conflict, uh, to to help them better develop their staff, uh, to. Uh, identify areas of the business where they might have impact, basically pl places where they could take ownership. I've also encouraged them on places where we, we've identified areas where we could take ownership. There are things where I have said we are not going to, right? So part of so part of kind of leadership in the job, right, um, the product side of what we do, right, is a good understanding of what to say no to. There's this thing called multivariate testing that lets you, let's say, uh, swap out different headlines and see which headlines are more attractive. That's how you get these crazy headlines from Huffington Post, you know, see who's vacationing at the Riviera. They didn't write that, right? What they did was they wrote four different headlines and then saw which one led to most traffic. And that's the one you're seeing, right? So there was an opportunity to um, be more of an advocate at Turner for it. And uh, and I said to the, the, the person who wanted to do this, like, you know, I don't think that that is... I think I think we are fully engaged in the things we're working on, and this is something that I agree would be good for Turner. But what are we going to give up? So I think part of what part of what you have to do as a leader, uh, you know, with, with in my job is to say, what are we not going to do? Right. So so one of the things I really help the team do, I think, is keep focus. And uh, the other thing I do is I hold them accountable. So that's another piece, right? Where People have made commitments, uh, and I, I've, I try, like any good manager, not leader, but to say, I try to say, when, what, what day does something do? And if the thing isn't due that day, I go, what's up? You know, I ask, what's up? And there's always a reason, right? There's always a reason. My direct reports don't get to have excuses, right? They get, they have to deliver. And what I tell them is, if you don't deliver, I mean, the way I perceive that is, you know. Either you were not, you know, you didn't do a good job of for forecasting, which I think you get like some passes on, but at some point you should know that like some things always take longer than you think and you should be able to make that mental adjustment. <clears throat> um, but so either you've done a bad job of forecasting, you need to get better at that, or you're a liar, right? And that I think, but that's my point about learning, right? <laughs> I try to make it a little shocking so that they can, that they grab onto it. So I think part of, part of that is, you know, the holding people accountable. And I'd say, like, you know, you asked before about what happens in a big company. It's a little harder to hold people strictly accountable in a big company, right? Because you have to operate in, in, a, um, in a, particular, a particular HR environment. Um, but I think that's an area where, uh, and truthfully, it's an area where I would probably be more aggressive if I were in a smaller company. I had more freedom on it. I'd probably hold people even more accountable.